Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, TV, film, everything really. We cover it all. As always, I'm your host, Pure Meliotis, and on Twitter, I go as PD Beats. My guest is an actor. You will recognize him as Hector on Crazy Ass Girlfriend. Eric Lopez is with us. Eric, welcome to Pop Turnative. Hey, hey, what's going on? Not much. Eric with a K at the end. Yeah, CK, CK, CK. I know it's it's uh, it's interesting. That that's important, man. Everyone's probably just gonna assume there's no K at the end. <laughs> yeah, you gotta let them know. Yeah, you gotta stand out for sure. Um, thanks for coming on the show, man. Yeah. Um, first question. You know, when did you kind of decide that you wanted to be a storyteller? Oh man, um. Uh... Probably super, super young, probably when I was in elementary school, uh, I was I was writing little raps in my uh, in my little notebook because I wanted to be like Eminem and 50 Cent. <laughs> and I just I, I I really love the stories that that they would tell in their music. I think rap was the first form of me being introduced to that. And yeah, just kind of like narrative writing, you know, like in school, fifth grade and stuff. You're on a show, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, which is a very, very popular show. Um, you know, the term cult classic can easily be um, associated with that show because, you know, um, like I said, four seasons, final season is is on right now. But then after that, it's going to have that following for many years. Talk a little bit about the show. Talk about your character, Hector, and kind of give our viewers kind of just like the insight of what it was like to work on a show like that. Oh, man. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, for those that don't know, it's a romantic musical comedy that really uh, flips a lot of stereotypes on its head. And uh, it's it's been a lot of fun to work on. I, I play Hector, who is one of the uh, friends of the ex-boyfriend that, you know, the, the girlfriend is, you know, the ex-girlfriend is chasing uh, cross country. She moves from New York to West Covina to chase this guy. And it's kind of fun because it, it it's about love, but it's also about like finding who you are and, and mental health. And there's a lot of cool like uh, songs along the way that aren't as cheesy as you think they are. No, absolutely. Kind of unique, too, because musicals are popular, but this is like a television series musical. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only other one I can think of right now is Glee. Uh, as oh, recently. yeah. I don't know we why know. I didn't. Yeah, it's true. I, can, <laughs> I keep forgetting that it's a musical. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, Glee is great. I wouldn't even be. Yeah, we had uh, Patrick Gallagher on the show. He played Coach Tanaka. Oh. Nice. Which was pretty uh, I mean, cool. We, we had a lot of uh, crew uh, come over from Glee because they just were so, you know, knowledgeable as far as like musicals on TV. So it was really cool to see. Did you know what to expect? Like, I mean, you get the part of Hector. I mean, you're like, you're no, like, you know, you're going to be working on a show like this. You know what I mean? You go for the auditions and everything. And then you get there and you get on set and you're like actually working. Did you like see any of it coming? Like how, what was the experience like when you first got on set to work on this show? I mean, like you have all the concepts, but when you actually kind of sink your teeth into it, was it a lot different than you thought it was going to be? Oh yeah, I mean, especially for a new show, you just you don't really know uh, where they want to take not only the story but your character. So you're like, okay, am I doing what they want me to be doing? Um, I remember the audition; they didn't really send over sides. It was just kind of like, oh, just show up, and they gave me like a cold read. And and then once I finally got on set, it was just like one or two lines to begin with. Um, I was only supposed to be around for a couple episodes, and they just kept on expanding that character. But Rachel, Rachel Bloom, who's the creator and lead of the show, she made the the set super inviting and warm. And the first thing she does is like, tell me how uh, she's like, oh, I loved your audition. And she's like, by the way, she's like, we just need to get a couple takes where it's like, you know, on the script and then we can kind of play around. So don't feel afraid to just like improv and ad lib. So she really gave us that kind of like uh, environment to play around and have fun. Absolutely. Um you're a big Dallas Cowboys fan. You're an <laughs> yeah. actor and you're a sports fan. I'm not going to ask you what you think of it. I want to ask you, how important is the cross 
promotion between like pop culture and sports for an actor like you because we see it all on social media you know you have actors tweeting about their favorite sports you have athletes tweeting about their favorite shows that's an important kind of dynamic going on what how like why do you think that's important to have in that in this day and age Eric? I think there's so many – it's actually a, re- a really good question. I mean, I think there's so many different shows popping up that it's really hard to keep track of everything. So the only thing that really fans and, and viewers can really keep track of is the actual people in the shows. Yep. And usually if if you vibe with someone and the projects that they're picking and the humor that they're bringing to a character, that probably means that the show itself probably is in the same page as that actor or you know the, the writer or whoever. So you kind of become a fan of someone and you trust their opinions and their judgments and stuff that they're going to pick a good show that you're going to like as well. So, wow. yeah, hopefully the next thing I do with like Crazy X fans will translate and be like, yeah, I love this, too. No, absolutely. That is true. We're in the golden age of television, one might say. The obvious kind of reasons for that is, you know, the rise of, you know, streaming services, a lot more content out there. What are some of the like non-obvious things that come to mind of why this is the golden age of television, Eric. Have you thought about anything? Because everyone's going to have the obvious, like, oh, yeah, there's more content, social media, Netflix, Hulu. But is there, everything, is there another reason that you think attributes to the fact that this is the golden age of television that people aren't talking about? Uh, yeah, I mean, rise of social media and opinions. Uh, I think that, you know, with, you know, if if Twitter wasn't around back in, in the day, um like whenever whenever Netflix and all that stuff started coming around, then I think that you would have seen a whole different trajectory. We would still be going to places to see ads and posters. But the fact that now we have like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, social media, like there's so many ways that we can hear about new shows and what's going on, memes, photos, like quick little gifts, you know, like there's so there's so many ways that we can get that movie poster instead of actually going to the movies to see the poster. That's a really good take. And it's now this is this is like one of my favorite like segments or questions on the show because I always love asking about misconceptions. So you're an actor working in the industry and right. you said you said it, not me. People have opinions on social media. They say a lot of stuff, right? People think they know everything about everything. People think they know everything going on with Eric Lopez. They know what it's like to be in the show. They know what you're doing. Like, they know everything. They think they know everything, but they don't. So my question to you is, what are some misconceptions about the industry from your perspective that are that people think or assume that you're like, wow, it's completely not it? Now, in the past, I've said examples of what other people have said, but I'm not going to do that now because I'm probably going to say them and you're going to be like, those are all the misconceptions I was going to say. So I'm going to ask you right now. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's interesting because I, I went back to, uh, I went back to talk to, um, there's a thing called Texas Thespian Festival and it's, you know, every, every year, all the theater kids and whatnot, they go to one place in Texas. So I remember going to that as a kid. So I went back there and spoke there and I asked them questions. I was like, Hey, what do you guys want to know? And uh, a huge thing that kind of came up was just like people thought that you had to go to a fancy school or study at a fancy place to like be in the industry or that you had to like a lot lot of people of color, like Latinos, black, Asian, like they were all wondering like, oh, is it going to be a problem for me? I'm like, no, if anything, it's going to be better for you. And then also another misconception is your uniqueness, like is actually a benefit. So if you are someone that likes to, um, I don't know, like really go mountain biking, like, like put that, that could be an asset to you as an actor. You know, do you hear a lot of times like, Oh, I'm an actor, I'm an actor, but it's like, you're also a human being and we have to become a full person before we play one on TV. So what do you do? What, what, what is, uh, what is it about you that's unique? And that's the misconception. You don't have to be a full like actor all the time. You can just be a person first and then, (laughs) <laughs> transition so i just want to say that that oh, answer has never been said before so thank oh. you <laughs> no that's amazing now i'm going to kind of tell you though the other like so the obvious ones you know we had like shauna hammock who's uh on the last season of orange is the new black with co ginger she said you know a couple things like not all artists are starving she says yeah it's a tough industry but not all of us are starving um she also said that not all 
actors and actresses are waiters and waitresses. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then uh, Bob Clendenin, who was in Scrubs, he was in uh, Cougar Town. His is my favorite, where he says that there's just this kind of like breed of actors who are just like middle class actors. They they live that like nine to five life. That they're and they're they have steady income from their shows and they don't have like the biggest roles, but they're just doing that and they're not really living that like quote unquote glamorous life that everyone thinks it is. I'm sure everyone wants to get yeah. there, but like it's yeah. it's one of those things where it it's interesting to hear the perspectives. But yours about being unique is very um interesting. What do you kind of think is important in terms of you know the audition process because like the job another misconception is people don't realize that the job is doing auditions the job isn't like it's not it's acting but auditions is what you do like most of the time right you're going for auditions all the time what is important for you when you go into an audition in terms of being unique or making sure you stand out I mean, uh, there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, I mean, uh, specifically, for example, for Crazy X, uh, I remember they didn't really have a script uh, for us right then. They It was all like, you know, show up and we'll give you a, a script. So all I had was that it, he was supposed to be a stoner. And I was like, okay, like, what what about this guy is different? What can, like, what can I bring to the table? And I'm like, well, even stoners have dreams. So what does he do? He doesn't just get high all the time. He has like some kind of dream. He has some kind of hobby. He's unique. He's a person, you know? And I said, okay, maybe he's a surfer. So then I put on a Hawaiian shirt and I put on a, a bandana and I show up to the audition and I kind of had that like really chill, but like excited vibe, not so much of a stoner, like chill vibe. Um, and yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's like it kind of shaped into what they see Hector now. Is there a lot? Is there some Hector in Eric Lopez? Or are you like completely different people? <laughs> oh, there's always yeah. In any character, you have to. There, there's always that little piece of you that you're like, oh yeah, I know, I know where this is inside me. But the interesting thing is, after getting to know me, Rachel and and the writers and everything, they're just like, this is so not Eric that they started kind of writing towards like this wise kind of person. I was all like, I don't know what you guys think I am. I don't. I don't think I'm wise or anything, but they're like, yeah, maybe you're like the voice of reason now. So I thought that was kind of interesting that they, that as Hector grew, he kind of morphed into more, more me. No, for sure. And another question I just came up with, because you were also on faking it. We we're talking about that before we, we got on air. You were in that show. Right. I find it interesting because it can go either way. Do you think it's easier or harder these days to, get a successful show um, on the air or on a streaming service? Because one can make the argument for both cases. It could be a lot harder because certain people have certain things they want to watch and they're more exclusive because there's so much out there. But then the so much out there can be a good thing too and can help you as well because people want to binge as much as they can. What do you kind of think about that? That's something, because when you were talking about Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, the process just made me think about like how much content there is out there. And it just seems like, especially like on Netflix, every show or most shows that like get posted on Netflix that get like the proper promotion do significantly well. Yeah, marketing, uh, yeah, marketing so huge on it. I mean, there's there's a lot of shows and I, I really do, I hope I'm, I'm answering the, the question, right, but it's like, I, I think that, Binging is uh, the, the way that um, content has kind of come around nowadays is a great way to storytell uh, for us creators. And then as viewers, there's a lot of times that you watch a movie and you love it so much that you rewatch it. 100%. And it doesn't matter how long. Yeah. And it's like two hours sometimes isn't enough and you really love something. And if uh, and you see it now, even with TV shows, like there'll be like four or five seasons and you'll rewatch those four or five seasons over and over again. I do that so, too. Yeah, it's just honestly, it's like you're gonna, you're either gonna rewatch that two hour movie 20 times or you're gonna rewatch the five seasons twice. Yeah, either way, people are still gonna binge on something that they love and it's just giving people more of what they love. For sure. This might, it's a two part question. I mean, it's gonna come off like there's gonna be a lot of like answers to this, but do your, do your best. But I right. mean, 2018, I mean, that's like, 
we're December um, tomorrow, so uh, one month and then 2018 is done, and then 2019 comes around. So two questions. Part one, um, how could you how could you describe in, a, in like a sentence or a couple of words 20, 2018 for Eric Lopez? And give us a little glimpse of what you want to kind of accomplish in 2019. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, 2018 was... Uh, I I really felt like there, there's always a point in anyone's like I guess career or anything like that where you're trying to you know figure things out you're trying to find where you fit in and then once you actually do find where you fit in you're trying to like to excel in that area where you fit in and I I feel like I'm in, I'm in that zone where you know Crazy X kind of ended in the perfect time like it's yep. just like okay let's ready to move on. Um, we've kind of run its course as far as like everything that the, these characters can do. Um, maybe a movie later on. I don't know, but like <laughs> as far as TV shows go, like definitely run its course. So I, I really want to see what, uh, what more family stuff, uh, entails in the future. I kind of want to do like a family show. I think that'd be kind of cool. Uh, mostly because in my personal life, I've kind of like, you know, recently got, uh, you know, engaged and eloped and everything. And I, I kind of want to, uh, explore, there's a lot of like really cool, comedic moments and dramatic moments and and really a young relationship uh, maybe not just marriage but just in relationship in general and how it affects friendships how it affects work i feel like there's a really good place to tell those kind of stories for uh for young people and and hopefully 2019 brings that along you keep like I keep asking these questions. There's a trend in this interview that I want to address. It's important. I keep like asking. No, no, no. Man, I feel like you know what I'm gonna say. I keep asking the questions, and you're like, "Oh man, like it's gonna be hard to answer." And then you kill it. You like <laughs> knock it out of the park. Have you noticed that's been going on? Like since since uh, the first question, like I ask you the question, you're like, "Oh," and then you just like completely nail it. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it, it comes from a real place. Whenever you ask the question, I'm just like, how am I going to answer this? Yeah. <laughs> I, guess, well, I guess the answer is there somewhere. For sure. Well, Eric, I think we'll wrap up, but thank you so much for uh, chatting with me on Pop Turative. I really, really appreciate it. For sure, man. Thanks for having me. You've no problem. Great. Where could people follow you on social media? Uh, yeah, follow me Follow me on the gram. Uh, yeah, Mr. Dot Eric Lopez, M R dot E R I C K Lopez. Awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turnative, youtube.com slash Pop Turnative for the video episodes. If you just want to listen and not watch, that's fine too. You could just go wherever you listen to podcasts because Pop Turnative is available everywhere. And when I say everywhere, everywhere. So you could do that. So Spotify, iTunes, and popternative.com for other content as well. And until next time, this is Eric Lopez and Peter Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.